that brings us to what most people see as the big theory concerning cosmology and the universe, and that's the Big Bang. Uh, how do you see that? Is it holding up over time? I don't think so. I think it's, it's getting some problems. You know, I reject it because I'm a biblical creationist mm -hmm. and I don't see any way that you can reconcile Big Bang with the Bible, though a lot of people seem to think that you can. I think the temptation they have there is to try to interpret uh, scripture in terms of the current cosmological thinking. That's nothing new. That's happened before, as it's turned out, with disastrous results. But uh, I like to compare the Big Bang model to the ruling cosmology of the Middle Ages, the, what we call the Ptolemaic theory. A man named Claudius uh, Ptolemy around the uh, early 2nd century AD developed this theory to explain the motions of the planets. As the planets orbit around the sun, and we orbit around the sun too, it makes for a very complex motion. Mm. The planets as well as the sun and the moon seem to move in a west to east direction along the ecliptic, the plane of the Earth's uh, orbit around the sun and solar system, actually the plane of the solar system. But from time to time, the planets reverse direction. They go from mm. west to east back to east to west. We call it retrograde motion. And that was difficult to explain if you think the Earth is the center of things, the geocentric theory like the ancients did. So what Ptolemy came up with is this very complex model where you had a planet not just orbiting around the Earth, but you had it orbiting on a smaller circle we call the epicycle. Uh, mm, and the epicycle mm. in turn went around the Earth. And if you mm. adjust the sizes of those two circles and the speeds, you can end up with this motion like this where the, where the planet seems yeah. to move backwards. Uh -huh. And this was the ruling cosmology for 15 centuries, from really the second century up through the 17th century. Now, as new data came along and problems developed so that you had a discrepancy between mm -hmm. the theory and the data, they simply altered the theory, added more epicycles to make the theory uh, work and fit. That was, the, that, was, that was the strength of the model, <laughs> uh -huh. that you could, you could adjust it to fit anything new that came along. Well, mm. the, it was also the undoing because it became very complicated. By the year 1600, there were systems of more than 100 epicycles. You had oh, gears my. on gears on gears on uh -huh. gears, and people realized this is way too complex. Mm -hmm. And finally, it was rejected. And the Big Bang has done the same thing. It's been the ruling paradigm for 50 years. And in that length of time, I've seen tremendous changes take place. You know, in the early 1980s, we had this Big Bang model that seemed pretty mature. And they were convinced that the Big Bang, this Big Bang model was true. But since then, a lot of changes have taken place. They changed the expansion rate of the universe, which decreased the age from 16 to 18 billion years to 13.8 billion, mm. plus or minus 1%. They've introduced string theory into the model. Mm. This is the thing, thing dealing with particle physics you have to put in. They've introduced dark matter. They've introduced dark energy. They've uh, introduced this kind of cosmic inflation that the universe expanded very rapidly in the early universe to solve a couple of problems that they have. Uh, by the way, there's no evidence for inflation, but everybody believes it happened yeah. because basically we're here, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, I've seen in my adult lifetime numerous changes taking place to the Big Bang Theory. and. Uh, it's starting to look like epicycles. It's mm -hmm. starting to look like the Ptolemaic model, mm -hmm. just as the strength of it of that model was that you could change it to fit new problems and data. They're doing the same thing with the Big Bang and changing mm -hmm. it. You know, they had the Kobe experiment in 1989 to 91 that was measuring uh, little fluctuations in temperature predicted in the background radiation, the supposed proof of the Big Bang. And uh, they had predicted fluctuations in temperature from point to point of one part in 10,000. Well, they found fluctuations one part in 100,000, mm. a factor mm. of 10 less. And afterwards, they said that the predictions and the, and the actual measurements beautifully agreed. I think, wait a minute, how can no. that be? What they did is they changed the model to fit the data mm. once again. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have rules like that, you can never disprove a theory. One of the fundamental assumptions that the Big Bang is based upon is that there's a homogeneity of the universe, that it's kind of smooth. It makes the mathematics work out mm -hmm. easier, by the way. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that on the local level, it's kind of clumpy. We have planets and stars and so forth, but then you have galaxies and then you have groups of galaxies and galaxies working their way up. And it's kind of assumed that on the biggest scale that that sort of smooths out. But what we found over the last 35 years is that this clumpiness goes up to the highest level. It's kind of shocking when they, when they begin to realize that. They don't talk about it much anymore. But the problem is this, this uh, we're now really poised to make what we think is the structure of the universe on the grandest scales. And it's clumpy all huh. the way up. And what so most people have failed to realize is this negates the very foundation upon which the Big Bang is, is based. 
the assumption of homogeneity. Mm. It's not homogeneous anywhere. It's been an mm. article of faith that at some level it is homogeneous, despite all evidence to the contrary. Mm. And we're seeing it on the, you know, the like the uh, giga light year scale now. It's oh. across the entire universe. Mm.